Hi, this is EV Adventures and I'm Rob. In back of me, you see the brand new Mercedes EQS SUV. And if you think that's a lot of initials, come drive it with me. Let's see how it is. the 2023 Mercedes EQS SUV, the sibling to the EQS sedans that we've reviewed not long ago. But while the sedan comes in 5, 584-matic and 450-plus rear-wheel drive for 2022, the 2023 SUV will come in three flavors, 450-plus rear-wheel drive, 454 Matic all-wheel drive and 584 Matic all-wheel drive. The first difference that you see are the twin power domes, as they're called, on the hood. This is a feature that uh, has presented itself over and over again in Mercedes history, and it looks great on the hood of this car. Also, um, unlike the sedan, it makes the hood visible from uh, the driver's position inside the car. You'll notice the wheel arches, in this case, painted gloss black, meant to assure you that this is indeed an SUV. The gloss black blends into the back and the rocker panels and defines the wheel wells nicely. On the back, the chrome strip down at the bottom is almost reminiscent of uh, an area where exhaust would exit, but I think really gives a, uh, a striking contrast. Yep, there it is, formatic. This example is in selenite gray, and the interior is neva gray, a very light gray with sable brown accents on the top of the doors, top of the dash, and the top of the center console. It has 21 inch wheels with all weather tires. It looks rather muscular with its rear haunches, reminiscent of its uh, sibling, the sedan. And like the sedan, it is more rounded in the front for greater aerodynamics. This example has the AMG exterior package, which you can see, especially on the front, by the air intakes low and on either side. And it also has the black panel with, is it 245? I'm not sure how many three-pointed stars and crowned by the large three-pointed star in the middle. That is a nice view of this vehicle. Looks rather with its headlights at the angle that they are. Now these are the digital headlights that can throw a pattern and can shut off certain pixels so as not to blind a driver that you're coming up behind or by stroking your finger along the door handle, it extends to you. The doors 
have a nice weight, nice heft to them. They feel substantial. The materials are excellent. The sable brown there is Neotex, which I just can't help thinking feels a bit like neoprene, uh, what a wetsuit is made out of. Um, leather then on the upper door, wood along the door handle, and then a soft touch plastic below. Inside, leather steering wheel, very soft. Again, Neotex on top of the dash, doors and armrests. This is one of the standard interiors. Leather with the microfiber headrests. Storage down below the console. And this model does not have the hyperscreen. But interestingly, the uh, central screen and the center stack work just beautifully. You can see there are accents there on the door and on the dashboard that are rose gold and they look quite good with these colors. It's a bit of a step up, not too much, but it puts you in a nice driving position. In the back seat, this is something I wasn't aware of or particularly ready for, but it's very cool. There is an actuator for the electric back seat on the top that moves the back seat and the front seat forward have the moonroof and skylight this is one of the few cars with a sunroof, moonroof that actually opens. It's very nice. Leather on the back of the driver's seat. The track there that the power rear seat moves on. Nice quality leather. There's that electric actuator and it moves forward and leans forward and then the same happens with the driver's seat, and that happens so that you can get into the third row. Those third row seats are definitely a younger child only type of thing, but it is a way to make this into a seven passenger vehicle. There are two USB-C ports on either side, along with a cup holder there. So by moving that switch the other way, the seat and the driver's seat will return to the position they were in before.
with the electronic movement of the back seat, the second row, um, you can kind of shift space around if the leg room in the second row isn't needed, you can slide that seat forward and give more room to the third row, etc. Now, the seat is set for me. I'm approximately six feet tall. And so in the back, there is more than enough room for me to ride comfortably all day. And the uh, the back seat, the second row, will recline some. They don't recline very far, but they do recline some. This particular model does not have the four zone climate control. The panel would be right there. It does have two lit USB-C ports. That Neotex in brown does look very nice with this light gray. Armrest. And in the armrest, the first detent is supposed to be a cell phone holder. I don't know. But then some cup holders that will definitely hold a taller cup or water bottle and then there is good bottle storage in the doors. A person certainly could sit in the middle although it's not really configured for that. heated seats in the back on this particular car. As with the sedan, there are three trim levels. This is the base trim level. Above that is the exclusive, and above that is the pinnacle. The pinnacle gives more accoutrements to the back seat passengers. No, okay. The cargo area, as you can see, has a good bit of room, especially with the third row laid down, and the third row seats um really do lay down nice and flat and so you don't lose anything by having those reasonable lift over height and again that faux chrome bit there with uh what could be exhaust outlets is a nice contrast. I like the selenite gray with the lighter gray, Neva gray interior that looks really striking. I tend to like a darker exterior with a lighter interior though. Again, the light bar across the front. And looking at the window sticker, You can see that this is the premium trim or the base trim. Is 
10 year or 155,000 mile high voltage battery warranty has all of the safety systems none of the trim colors are extra cost the acoustic comfort package is the bilaminated glass AMG multi-spoke wheels in 21 inch rear side airbags very nice Massage seats, heated windshield and such, has the winter package on it. EPA rating of 285 miles of range. No crash test ratings as of yet. And from the driver's seat, there is the multi-configurable panel in front of you and the steering wheel. I, you know, I hear a lot of people uh, unhappy with capacitive, touch capacitive buttons. I like those. Um, too much piano black on the center of the steering wheel and on the center console. Um, when I see piano black, I think fingerprints. Um, cup holders. Kind of an ingenious idea there. Uh, if you don't have cups, you can put something else there. But um, you set your cup down and it uh, springs out and holds onto it. Now we'll drive off the showroom. I did have permission to do this, FYI. And you'll be able to hear just faintly some of the external running noise that I have turned on. There's always some as a pedestrian warning. And you can see how those two power domes make that hood more visible. So we're going to the Electrify America. See the augmented reality on the middle screen. As far as I can see, this car does not have a heads-up display, unless it's turned off somehow, but I don't think it is. This is, without argument, the quietest electric car I've ever been in. Electric cars without engine noise and that sort of thing are always pretty quiet, but 
this has the sound deadening package which is at least the laminated glass and there may, may be other components to that as well This is a good way to go. This will get us on the motorway, as the British would say. I've got it in intelligent recuperation. When I drove the EQS sedan, the intelligent recuperation seemed to give about the best uh, blend of regeneration, regenerative braking and friction braking. What you see on the middle screen is what they refer to as traffic light view. And I had thought originally that that was something on the order of with the Tesla being able to see the traffic lights, that sort of thing. Um, instead, what this is, is you get a wide angle view of the entire intersection so that you're more aware of cars that are potentially not doing the right thing and may pose a threat to you. Like that. And here we are at Electrify America. And this Electrify America in Waukee, Iowa, is I've only one time have I seen one of the chargers down. Scorpion Zero all weather tires. I've had those on an SUV before. They work very well. 285, 45, 21s. So we've charged to 100% at Electrify America. And according to the guessimeter, um, that means a maximum of 296 miles. And here's the startup sequence for the EQS SUV. Gives you some good graphics there. The computer boots up really very quickly. So we'll spend some time going through the settings.
Oh, well, we have an over-the-air update. So, well, maybe we don't. This is just a setting. Okay. Allow updates. Yes. Oops. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just a setting, I guess. Okay. So, I thought we'd turn our attention to the center screen. Um, this is one of the two that I really like because um, you have a power meter on the right side and it tells you what recuperation mode you're in and that sort of thing in addition to, of course, the uh, how fast you're going and that sort of thing. Now, um, going down here, if we want to change that, we push the home button and then we can slide along this way, navigation, assistance. This is the other one that I like quite a bit. And simply because it does, like the Tesla display, show you the cars around you and, uh, and that sort of thing. So, uh, and it also helps with anybody in your blind spot. So, Back to our selection. I thought off-road was kind of interesting. Um, so, tells you your pitch and, um, and that sort of thing as you're going over rough terrain. I believe that there is a setting on the center stack that will, aha, that will take us to off-road. So there's the off-road setting. Not that we're going to go off-road, mind you, we're not. But it has, I think what they call the invisible hood so that you can see so that you can see what is underneath. Okay, tires, suspension, and it shows you the extension or compression of your suspension, all four wheels. Okay, descent control, raising and lowering the Raising and lowering the body. And let's see what, oh, okay. We've got options up here. Tire temperature, position, GPS, good. Drive, which wheels are driving, and that's suspension. Let's look at, okay, there's tire pressure, tire temperature, position, drive, back to tire pressure. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, let's turn on the cameras that way. Nope, that's not it. There, we're back to, don't know whether this slides. Okay. All right. Perhaps it has to be at a certain uh, angle or something like that in order to get that through the hood view, but apparently not sure how they do it, but it shows you what is um, directly in front of, but more importantly, underneath um, where your hood is. Interesting. So this is setting the personal sound profile.
set your personal comfort volume. Okay. Set a volume which you find to be low. Find that to be low. Set the sound which you find to be balanced. A little haptic feedback there. your desired volume for the displayed instruments. That's good. You can change the result further using sound exploration or continue with the configuration. sound stage around you and above and below. So, from what I can find, I plotted a um, destination to Denver, Colorado, and I did not get charging um, waypoints automatically put in. There is a way that anywhere you are, um, you can instruct the system to uh, look for the nearest charging facility and then take your choice. But uh, I may well be missing something in regard to it automatically putting in those charging points. You know, one thing I will say is that not only is this display really easy to see, highly resolved, but um, really responsive. Um, you can see really moves quickly in regard to what I want to see. So, um, and right down to the building level. So, at any rate. Um, all right, well, let's do some driving. I have to say it's very nice to just close the sunroof yesterday and uh, just sliding your finger across that smooth that smooth switch and there you go. It's a Chevy Blazer, not electric of course, but next year or the year after, whenever it is that the blazer is coming out in electric, that will be very interesting. I think the, um, the examples they've come out with up to now are really quite interesting visually. And I'm not sure how they'll drive, but definitely more of a, um, more of an affordable 
means of electric transportation. And this car wouldn't be doing its job if it didn't go to the mall. So here we are. I love going into parking spots with that four wheel steering. Okay, so in park. And off we go. Okay, so starting up, we'll press our go button. You know, another thing I want to say is that um, as much as I like the hyper screen, this is perfectly nice. And ask if these have car wash mode. It does. It does have car wash mode. Um, and you can raise and lower. I don't know if it will remember that um, based on GPS coordinates. Sound experience. Turn that on. Okay, and I can hear it outside. Ah, silver waves or vivid flux. Sound experience outside. Yeah, what the heck? There we go. Okay. GPS based raising. Yes, it does have that. Creep function. That may be why when we use full regen that we don't um, come to a full stop, I wonder. Oh, so, there we are. We can see ourselves from every angle. Hmm, not changing out of normal recuperation. Let's see if it'll do it now. No? Okay. So, all right. We're in reverse. I can hear us beeping on the outside. Feels a little bit like driving a dump truck or something. Okay. Okay. Now we're in strong recuperation. I guess you have to be driving in order to switch that. We'll see if that will bring us to a full stop here. Yes. You know, I know the um, artificial sounds through the speaker. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a drive with me. That's great. Um, not too long ago, I reviewed uh, the forerunner of this car, the EQS SUV 580 4Matic. And uh, one of the things that I commented about that was its exterior appearance. Well, this car is also, not a stranger to some division in regard to how it looks, but not so much as the um, EQS sedan. This looks a good bit more uh, like your average SUV. Um, and so 
not quite as much concern about that. As a matter of fact, I've had several people tell me how much they liked how it looked. Uh, and one gentleman said, are you sure you can't get this body style in a gas engine? Sorry, no. So what does the EQS SUV have? Well, it has great fit and finish, luxurious interior, um, in my eyes, a terrific design, um, quiet as can be, very safe, um, thanks to the rear wheel steering and the battery, which of course is at the bottom of the car, giving a low center of gravity, thanks to those things, um, this car corners beautifully, even though it might slosh around a little bit, especially when you don't have it in sport mode, um, it will corner nicely. What else does this car have? Well, it has what you might call street cred. Mercedes-Benz has been around for over 100 years and been making cars that have just been the mark of luxury. So this car is the EQS SUV 450, but it's not just the 450 rear wheel drive. This is the 450 4Matic. And uh, so this is the middle of the line. There'll be a 450 rear wheel drive. There'll be a 580 4Matic. This falls in the middle, the 450 4Matic. This will be the car that I think a lot of people will, will go for. It's a little bit less expensive. Well, maybe a lot bit less expensive than the 580 and very competent. Even off-road, um, Mercedes at this car's launch in Colorado um, ha had reviewers driving it off-road, just sort of amazing. You're not going to want to take this car off-road, uh, at least not until it's paid for. It is probably the car that most people are going to go for, um, right, right in the middle. This is a... The 580, the 580 will have more oomph off the line, and uh, overall it will be more expensive, but primarily because of that oomph off the line. To my knowledge, it won't have greater range. Um, if it does, not by much. So. Uh, this car gives you everything the 580 would except that extra power. You know, like I had said in regard to the EQS sedan, this car knows what it is. You look at the pillows on the headrests on the seats and the, uh, the seats themselves and just really everything about this car says I'm a luxury car. This car has no, no distortions of its identity saying that it's a, a sports SUV. They may come out with an AMG version that may change that a little bit, but this is a luxury car. And it, uh, as long as you remember what this car is, it will remember, it knows, Mercedes knows, and uh, this is not unlike an Audi or anything on that order, probably more luxurious, more well-appointed, more well-thought-out in terms of being a dedicated electric platform, um, but this car will, in my prediction, have terrific popularity. Um, it's an expensive car. It's over $100,000, but for that, 
you get tremendous luxury, tremendous car, great road car. The rear wheel steering even makes it a pretty darn good car in terms of cornering and that sort of thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please leave comments. I really like to hear what you're thinking about and what you would like to see in terms of content. And uh, it's because of you that I can do these things and I really like doing them. Thank you again. Have a great day.